Hey everybody, it's Mike with Paradigm Rigging. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, today we're gonna go for an external overview of the Broadway load cells. Uh, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna take a look at the three separate cells, the 5 8 load cell, the three quarter inch, and then the three quarter inch twist links. And we're gonna quickly kind of go over some of the physical maintenance items that we're gonna be taking a look at on the cells. Any of the information we're gonna talk about can be found within the Broadway support pages. And so the Broadway user manual, great resource for this. And then obviously these videos are gonna help show you a little bit more in depth of kind of the hands-on route of what we're looking at. Uh, before every use, uh, like every rigging product, making sure that we have no obvious defects of here. And then we're gonna kind of go through some of the obvious things we're taking a look for. So let's follow along. By the end of this video, you'll have a good idea of what you're looking for around the load cell, whether it's going out to a show or coming back from a show uh, to make sure that your cell is still in its best possible condition that you can be expecting. Okay, so I have three of the Broadway Gen 3 load cells in front of me. I have the BWS-325 over here. So this is the 5 8 inch load cell. Uh, the BWS-475, which is a three quarter inch cell. And then the BWS-475TL, which is the twist link cell in here. Uh, so I'm gonna start, uh, we're just gonna kind of walk through with the 5 8 cell. Uh, the three quarter cell, we're gonna be looking at all the same things, and then we'll come back to the twist link cell to make a few extra notes out of that one. So while we're looking at the 5 8 cell, uh, a couple initial things we're going to be looking at. So we're going to be looking at our overall general condition over here. So we're looking on the shackle bow over here. Uh, we're looking, making sure it's any, free of any cuts, nicks, cracks, gouges, uh, any excessive wear, um, any wear that we might see within this area in here, which is pretty typical, but excessive wear and uh, deformation out of here. So if we're bent outward, inward, anything like that. Next item. Um, one of the obvious ones we're going to be looking at is physical wear of our enclosure in here. So this houses all the electronics, so this is important to keep. Um, well, it's, it's a IP67 rated, so uh, we just want to make sure we have no excess damage, wear, um, cracks, anything like that. So we're looking pretty good condition over here. We want to make sure that this piece over here that keeps our shackle bow in place, um, that is also fastened in there correctly. Other important note when we are coming along in here, uh, we want to be making sure that our ID on our shackle bow is matching our ID on our load cell. Um, so we have our ID right here, our six digits, the FD6AFE, also matching our 6D, sorry, FD6AFE on our shackle bow. While we're also looking at a label here, uh, we're also checking to make sure that the label is one in place. And it's also legible. We can next take the shackle part in here. So I'm using an R clip over here, which is the standard uh, of the Broadway cell. Um, we do have another unit that we've started using in here. I'll have a link in this uh, in the description below. Um, so this is actually a locking R clip. Um, product is from McMaster Car, but I'm sure you can get it from other places. So this clips right on here and it is um, a pretty nifty little piece here. So it just stops that R clip. Um, same idea as the R clip, just stops it from popping out. So it's a nice little piece of kit. Um, we'll have that linked below in the description. But once we have our uh, R clip out, we can remove the nut. We wanna make sure that this nut um, comes on and off uh, smoothly off the load cell. Um, you know, no damage off the threads or anything like that. When we pull the cell apart, things our centering bobbin we're gonna be looking inside here to make sure it's all clean clean and intact um, no gouges excess dirt or anything like that now our load pin also on here uh, we're gonna be looking on here making sure this pin is clean um, you can see we have like a little bit of uh, just residue of dirt on here so we would take a either a just lightly damp cloth or dry cloth wipe this make sure this is smooth clean um, we have no uh, cracks, nicks, gouges, anything like that off here. Um, so looking here, um, our pin is looking good in here. Our bobbin is looking good condition. We can inspect inside the rest of the shackle bow, make sure that uh, no damage is noted in here. 
And from here, um, important note, when we're putting the cell together, we want to make sure that we're always in this orientation with our ID matching on the same side as uh, our sticker on the enclosure in here. Um, this is just because the units are calibrated in that fashion. Uh, so to make sure that we are adhering to that um, spec, we want to make sure that stays assembled in that orientation. Uh, not to say though, it won't fit that way. Um, but we just try and keep that route if we can. So from here, we have our nut that will slide right on. Uh, that comfortably goes on. Nothing's tight. Everything fits smoothly. And then from here, we'll just put our R clip in, put this in, and now we're fully assembled. One other note, we're going to remove the battery cover off of here. Uh, so we can see we have four posi head drive screws over here. Um, one of the products that we like using here is uh, this one screwdriver in here from Weha. Um, there's where we can see the size of the Ponzi drive in here. I think it's about $6 from McMaster Car. Great product. Um, we want to make sure that obviously our screw heads aren't stripped, anything like that, and we'll take a look. So once we have the load cell open, um, we have this rubber gasket around the whole outside edge in here. Uh, this is important to make sure um, that we keep that clean of any uh, dirt, dust, uh, any debris like that. Um, I mean, this is what keeps our load cell waterproof when we're outside in here to our IP67 rating. Uh, so we just want to make sure that that's clean. And um, sometimes we'll use either a damp rag or a small little brush just to make sure that's kind of smooth and uh, perfectly clean. Um, other item, we're going to take a look at our uh, screw connections in here. When we're fastening the lid on, we want to make sure that we are not over tightening these screws. Important note, we want to make sure the screws are snug just so we do have that water tight seal out of here. Uh, however, do note that over tightening these screws or stripping these out is not covered under any warranty. Uh, we're looking in here. I have my batteries in here. Let's remove the batteries. Look for battery condition, make sure we don't have any leakage in here. If we do see any battery leakage on any of the terminals, what we're going to want to make sure we do is give that a little wipe um, and keep these battery terminals clean. What works well if there is a little bit of uh, battery corrosion off there or any battery leakage, and we found that um, just dipping your cloth in a little bit of vinegar neutralizes that and it wipes off pretty well. Another note, just behind the antenna on our left hand side, we're going to pop that out. These are all the electronics, uh, the chipset for uh, the load cell in here. This is an important note. When we're not using our load cells, remove our batteries. If we have battery leakage that does come into this chipset, uh, good chance it will ruin that chipset. And it's probably one of the surefire ways that you can destroy one of these load cells. Potential troubleshooting note to be aware of, uh, this antenna that we can see right here is a little snap connection. So it can pop right off remove the antenna. Um, if that did pop off and you didn't know it was popped off, you might be having an issue of reading that load cell once you go out of a certain distance. So obviously you'll have a reduced range if it's not plugged into the antenna. If you do happen to run across it, that's always something to check. Make sure you get your antenna is properly um, affixed in there and not that didn't pop off. For the most part, it's not gonna pop off on its own unless uh, it pops out and there's some reason like that. So you will find on some of the units, uh, the antenna does kind of pop up a little bit from the wire below it. This is an item that Broadway is aware of and working on fixing. Um, just be aware, either lightly set it in. Uh, we've used either a little piece of tape on the inside to hold that down, or the other item is just set it in and just be careful when we're closing that enclosure to make sure that we do have that seal. So that's wrapping up with our um, 5 8 inch uh, load cell over here. So I'm just gonna set that aside for now and we're gonna take a look at the uh, twist link cell. So as we can see, the twist link three quarter inch cell, it's pretty similar to the five eight inch cell. Uh, same items, we're double checking that we have the same ID on the shack of bow as we do the enclosure. The one item we're gonna be looking at in here is inspecting this twist link. So as we can see over here, we have a pretty easy indicator over here. It says sensor with arrows we want to make sure that's going into our load pin. And just like we looked at on the other cell, 
we're checking the threads, make sure the threads are opening easy enough. Once we remove this apart, we're also looking at the inside of the twist link, making sure any of that smooth, clean, free debris, same on the load pin in here. And then when we are reassembling this uh, to make sure that our sensor is going through this upper hole in here. So we'll reassemble. Put our clip back in. And now we're good to go. So only minor change within the twist link load cell, but it's just one to keep aware of. That wraps up what we have to look at for the physical inspection of the load cell. Uh, by this point, you should have a good idea of what you're looking for when a load cell comes back off a show, uh, making sure that there's no damage seen on the load cell. Uh, just inspect it, make sure it's clean, free of any uh, defects out of that. Um, if there are any defects, obviously that's something that you're going to note down, mark our item out of use, and then uh, take a look at what repair items might be needed from there. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Make sure to like this video, subscribe, and let us know any videos that you might want to see going forward. Thanks for watching.